Welcome back to Quad Radio, and this is part two, and this is one of the greatest probably history lessons we could ever get in off-road racing, back with uh, the greatest off-road racer of all time, Mr. Barry Hawk. Barry, uh, welcome, and again, thanks for your time today, and uh, welcome to those guys that have uh, tuned back in with us. And uh, Barry, I I just want to pick up where we left off. We were talking about Bob Sloan and and, and what a great man he was and and a competitor and and all that, And, and like you said, man, I mean, you raced against the icons of the sport there's no doubt and and what's really neat is we talked a, a couple of years ago about trying to get a uh, a class together where some of you old school go- school guys could actually uh, get together and that's something that is possibly maybe a reality map now that uh, you're kind of retired huh yeah it is uh, i know it, i don't know if it was last year or the year before we had talked a little bit about it and nothing ever came of it but uh I know there still is some talk of it, and I actually had talked to Dean about doing some motocross stuff, and there may not be a lot of people know, but I raced, I think it was two or three quad motocross nationals I raced at High Point back, I don't know, 97, 98, 99, somewhere in there, and I think I may have had a ninth overall finish at one of them or something, I may have been my best, I don't exactly remember, but... uh you know, yeah, it would be it would be interesting to get back out there and have an old school race with some of the guys that I've raced over the years. And, you know, I think at the time, maybe it was if it was last year or year before, whenever it was, whenever there was talk of it, I think a couple of the guys were like, "Well, that's not fair. You're still racing. You're in shape." <laughs> but you know, now having a year off a of race, but I'm not in the shape I was for sure, or the shape I was when I was racing. So it would be uh, it would definitely be interesting to do something like that. I mean, it would be. I think it'd be a lot of fun if the guys could go out there and everybody just go out and have fun and race around and you know not not put too much into it. I think right. it could be a blast for everyone. But I, I I think maybe one of the downfalls to it is if you're a pro racer, you know what it takes to, <laughs> to win and to go through all that. And it would be like, well, you know, I need to start training. And I got to do this, and you know, I got to get a ride. And it may take the fun out of it for some of the guys. But if they could just all of a sudden make it happen, I think it'd be a really cool deal. Yeah, maybe maybe we can do something impromptu sometime where nobody has a whole lot of warning about it. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later in the season. Let's continue with this history, man. We were talking uh, about, of course, uh, the history basically of ATV and GNCC, the way that you came up through it and the guys you came through. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, you know, one of the, I, I think, things that 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 gncc is based on and where its birth came from was the blackwater and and i think there's a lot of history there in that one particular event in and of itself and i'm sure the few years that you had the opportunity to run it oh definitely it was blackwater was one of those things where it wasn't just another race by any means i mean it was one of those ones where it was like you prepare all year or whatever you got to do to to get ready for that event was like, I mean, it was, I guess it would maybe be on the lines of of the Ironman race, which, you know, that's the other thing, I guess, with Bob, you know, some of the people, the new people think, well, it's the Ironman. Well, that's, that race is it for Bob Sloan. I mean, it was just because he was one of the original guys that started racing. uh, He would race the bike on Sunday after the quads raced on Saturday. So that's where the name came from. I believe it was John Ayers kind of gave Bob that name, the Iron Man. But uh, back to the Blackwater, um, that was, man, I, my first year there, I really didn't know what to expect. 89, I was 16 years old, went went to race the Blackwater, and I I don't even know if I finished in the top 10 in my class that day. But it was, I remember going into one of the bogs there, and I was stuck so bad, and it was just, you, you don't know where you're at, you're out in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. and I was stuck, and there was a couple other guys stuck, and we all agreed, okay, well, if we get his quad out, then we all got to team up and get this quad out, and then we all got to team up and get my quad out, and it was like, it took four guys to get my quad out of this mud ball, wow. and then once you get out of it, it's like, okay, you know, you're out of breath, and try and limp, limp on and finish this race, and it was tough, I mean, there's, you know, different times now, you have some of the sections on the track, and the guys are complaining, oh, you got that one mud hole, and that mud hole's dumb, or this and that. And I, I don't really say anything, but I'm thinking, man, these guys are complaining about this one mud hole. You had 50 of them at Blackwater, you know. But but then again, you can't have 50 of those, or you can't have five or ten of those holes in today's race because there's so many more guys. You know, that was just, that's one of the things. Or I guess it's old school, and you can't go back to the way things were. But, uh, I mean, that Blackwater race was definitely, it was... It was a show. I mean, there was some stuff there. You know, when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, <laughs> different things at the mud hole with, uh, that was kind of like the center of the 
of the whole thing. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't racer productions mud hole. It was just kind of a mud hole that formed in the middle of the pits. I mean, that was one of the, you saw some stuff there. Whenever you know, a teenager, you're thinking, "Wow, this is the coolest thing in the world." But now, you, I don't know if you quite want some of the kids to see it nowadays. <laughs> but I mean, you never knew what you was going to see or what was going to happen at Blackwater. And I mean, the track was rockier than anything I've ever raced on. And muddier and it was tougher than tougher than anything we have now that's for sure and 1993 i was lucky enough that i got a win there it was the last year that blackwater was raced and uh you know i ended up i think i started maybe like 49th because you drew it's kind of like um how snowshoe is now you start on the street and uh you drew your number, you drew it out of a bucket like some of the guys do nowadays. You just draw out of a bucket. And I remember at that particular race, uh, I had met my wife at that, well, she wasn't my wife there, my girlfriend, Kristen. I had t- took her to Blackwater and I told her, you know, hey, I want you to draw my number out of this bucket for my start. And she's like, okay, well, she reaches in. And I, I think it was like 48, 49, or 50 were the last numbers on pro that the pros would have been starting on. <laughs> Kristen, Kristen reaches in the bucket and pulls out, I, I think it was 48 or 49. I, I don't exactly know. I just know I started on the last row of the pros. And right away, I looked at her, and she got these big tears in her eyes, and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, that's all right. I said, it don't matter. I said, anybody I catch, it already means I've got them beat on just the time. <laughs> and, uh... You know, it, it, it honestly didn't bother me. I was fine with it. And that day, I, I think Bob may have, Bob Sloan may have started in the second or third row. And I remember catching him on the second lap. We had only, we would only do two laps there because the laps were so long. And I caught Bob on the second lap, and he was leading me overall. And I thought, I've already got him beat on adjusted time by like a minute or minute 20 or whatever it was. And I thought, man, I don't, I don't have to pass him. I can just stay right here. Well, I end up. You know, I had a good line through one of the mud holes and passed him, and I physically finished the race first overall, even though I didn't have to. Wow. But, you know, at the time, it was a bunch of my friends, you know, just the event kept growing and growing. And it was, I mean, there must have been 20 or 30 of my high school friends were there, and, I mean, it was it was pretty neat. It definitely ranks up to us one of the best events that I can that I ever won and I can remember. It was It was quite the show, that's for sure. No doubt. It really sounds like it. And then, of course, after Blackwater passed, I mean, what was the atmosphere of GNCC racing? I mean, because that was kind of like the, I guess, the thing that kind of brought the world's attention to it at, at that particular time anyway, it seemed. Yeah, there definitely was. I mean, at the time, the quad racing wasn't as big as it is now. But on the bike side, you know, there was, I remember some of the guys from out west, uh, the bike guys, they showed up like Larry Rossler and Ty Davis and those guys. They would show up to race it. And it was, you know, the factories, I think it was just a matter of there was the numbers. There were so many people that raced it. And it was such like a big show that... A lot of the, the magazines and everybody showed up to it, and it was such a big deal to all the manufacturers, and it just kept growing. And it was like, you know, it's just one of the things where it just it grew, it, it grew to the point where it was so huge. But I think that was the downfall of it was it was so huge that it created a lot of other problems for the whoever owned the, the property. I don't even know, <laughs> but you know, it was a lot of problems for for those for the landowners and, and different things to race the productions and then, you know, almost, uh, you know, I guess killed the event off. It was so big. But, uh, you know, I, I think if you was, if you raced it, that was one of the things where if you raced it, you think, well, I want to go do some of these other GNCCs because this is a GNCC. And it had grown to where, you know, the other events, yeah, they weren't maybe not as tough, but it was still a GNCC race. And I think that's, that, you know, maybe... Well, it's not maybe. It's definitely what put GNCC on the map was, you know, the the Blackwater, and it just helped, you know, grow to the point to where it's at now. And I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. From back in the in the days when I was sixteen, seventeen, the the event, the size of the event, and the spectators and the racers that were there compared to what's there now is is amazing. So I mean, it's it's Blackwater definitely was probably what to put GNCC on the map for sure for sure and seeing where we are today I know 
talking about the history. What what about today, man? I mean, I think that you guys spawned something so many years ago, and maybe even more so you in particular because of you know the late '90s, and that's you know that's just seems like whenever it all took off. But uh, I mean, GNCC does have a lot of history. But I mean, do you at all feel any re- bit responsible for what this ATV racing series is like now? I mean, some of the best people in the world that ever threw their leg over four wheels are racing it now i mean and the talent field has deepened so much i mean and you get to see it firsthand now especially as a as a as a trail builder now with the gncc out there on the trails and sweeping and stuff i mean you get to see a lot of great stuff tell me a little bit about the competition and and do you feel at all responsible for it um i Actually, I never really give it much thought if I'm responsible to it or not. I mean, I guess thinking about it, I would like to think I maybe had something to do with it. But, you know, looking back on it, the, the DeLulo and Sloan battles, and then it went into the me, myself, Bob Sloan, and then it kind of, I had a few years there where I battled with Chad Duvall, and then Bill Balance came in, and then it was the Hawk Balance battle. And, and then it went to the Balance Boards battle, and, you know, I, I guess... I guess maybe I did have something to do with it. I, I don't really know. I didn't give it much thought, but, uh, you know, I I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, what about the the talent? I mean, look at it. I mean, it, it's pretty impressive, actually. But, oh, definitely, yeah. I remember, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys now, I mean, that's that's what they do. That's their full-time job is racing uh, four-wheelers. And, uh, well, back when I first started, there was no one that raced full-time. You, you went and worked your nine to five job and then you went and raced on the weekend and I think I guess I probably was one of the first guys that on the on the G N C C side, the quad side that was that was my full time job was, you know, kind of racing. I mean I, I had some other job I guess I maybe helped out, you know, on the home front with working some side jobs or whatever, but, I mean, that was kind of almost my main deal was racing full-time quad GNCC, and, uh, you know, there's quite a few guys doing it now, and the talent those guys have, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing to watch these guys, how deep the field is, and how many guys there is, and, you know, and then different times there's been some of the the old school guys say, well, what do you think now? You think these guys are better than we were back, you know, whenever, whether it was my bike mechanic, Doug Whitmer, he was a quad pro guy back when I raced. I mean, I remember battling with him a lot of races, and I don't, I think maybe the general consensus amongst amongst the retired guys or the guys that don't do it anymore is we don't think that the, the guys maybe are any better, better than we are, but they're able to put more effort into it and train more and do more because that's their job and the machines are better than what we had. So I guess that got to be a argument forever for everyone, you know, that the guy's better nowadays than the guy that I was back in 93. I, I don't know. Maybe one guy say yeah, the next guy say no, but, you know, it's, there's definitely a lot of talent out there. And, I mean, it's the guys, my hat's off to the guys. And different times when I'm out there and I do a lot of the helmet cam stuff, well, I see him racing around, so I, and, and I kind of get the itch to do it and get out there with him and race around a little bit. I'd love to just jump on a quad and chase him around a little bit on the last lap or whatever and kind of maybe try to make a pass every now and then, but then I think, you know what, I've been there and done it. I don't feel like it. I think about it for about two minutes, and then I'm over it. So. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's the guys are definitely, my hat's off to them. I mean, those guys are... They're, they're training. I mean, Borch, I think mean, Chris Borch and McGill and uh, maybe Jeff Pickens. Yeah, I, I guess the list goes on and on. They're down in Florida already training. You know, they're preparing for the season. Yeah. You know, that, that's awesome for, for those guys, and that's awesome for the sport to, you know, to maybe elevate it to the next level. For sure. That's for sure. Well, Barry, I tell you what, I'm going to let you get back to work today. I know you got a lot of prepping to do for the GNCC season, but it's been great talking with you, and thank you very much for uh, all that you do and have done for uh, the off-road ATV racing world. Um, uh, thanks for giving me a call, and uh, you know, I appreciate it, and hopefully you'll have me back on sometime later in the year. Oh, for sure. We'll want to get your insight, that's for sure. That's Barry Hawk. I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Quad Radio.